In 1593, Galileo Galilei created a device meant to translate the feeling of heat into an objective numeric value. It was called the thermoscope. Fast forward to now, where our test developer Cedric, not that Cedric, created the scratchy factor, a formulation meant to translate the smoothness of mechanical keyboard switches into an objective numeric value. Hi, I'm Abby, not Cedric, Cedric, or Galileo from Ratings.com, where we've been developing a new test bench for our newest product category, keyboard switches. We already made a video about developing our latency test, which you can check out wherever the card appears. In this video, we'll look at how we developed our keystrokes and factory smoothness test. We'll review how personal switches can be and answer whether you can accurately capture a subjective feeling with objective numeric data. The switch makes up the bulk of the typing experience, from how the keyboard feels when you press the key to how it sounds. Yes, the case material, keycap profile, and internals alter this experience, but the switch is the part you're directly engaging with the most. This explains why some folks are so picky about the switches they use. I write all day, so I like having a lighter switch. I need my hands to keep pace with my thoughts, so the less I press, the better. For others, their needs are different. Not only that, their tastes are completely different. So Anthony, what kind of switch do you use? I use the Kalebox Jade switches. I love how they feel, and it annoys my coworkers. You guys can be annoying. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you determine what a good switch is when that's different for each person? The first place to look is in the description. Smoothness is a word that comes up frequently when people search for and discuss switches. It's usually positive, the antithesis of the negative scratchy feeling. The spring or the plastic components rubbing against each other in the switch contributes to this unpleasant scratchy typing experience. And some people are so opposed to it, they'll spend hours putting lube on their switch components just to avoid it. Now, we don't lube any of our switches before testing. That would take way too long and potentially skew the results. Plus, it wouldn't represent how the switches feel right out of the box. To analyze how smooth or scratchy a switch is, we first gather keystroke data. We use an EpoMaker TH21 keypad and place a sample of five switches into it. We place the keypad under a force tester along with a shim to make sure the keypad is flat so the load cell comes down perpendicular to the keycap. The load cell slowly presses down and records the force until the switch bottoms out, at which point it goes back up and measures the return force. After collecting the data for the five switches, we reinterpolate it to preserve the integrity of the raw data while still making the graph readable. Each of the five switches gets its own graph run. While you might see some variants, like in the Kale Thick Box Navy switches graph, it doesn't necessarily mean that this switch is inconsistent. The force tester is sensitive. So these variances could result from something as simple as the placement of the load cell shifting a few millimeters. We don't test switch feel consistency for that reason. What's more interesting to us are the differences within the run, the zigzags we see. To obtain our scratchy factor, we take the graphical data and calculate a moving average to smooth it out. This creates a smoothness reference, the smoothest key press this specific switch could theoretically have, though it won't in actuality. Against this smoothness reference, the jitters and noise detected throughout the actual key press, those zigzags, really stand out. So we calculate the cumulative deviation of the actual keystrokes compared to the reference. We only use the data that falls within the gray shaded area, which we then normalize based on that area's size so the switches are comparable and aren't penalized unfairly. The resulting number is small, so we multiply it to get it a more comparable number, and you see that in the review as the scratchy factor. These little jitters and zigzags that make up most of our calculation are visually on the graph, but can we feel them when playing with a switch? To find out, I ran a little test in the office. In my little experiment, I asked people to arrange the switches from what they thought was the smoothest to the scratchiest. They had no time limit and could manipulate the switch however they wanted without taking the keycap off. Under the keycaps were the seven black switches we tested, Ink Black V2s, Oil Kings, regular G Pro Blacks from Gateron, Echo CS Jelly Blacks, Kale Box Blacks, and Cherry MX Regular and Silent Blacks. Based on our scratchy factor, participants should agree that the Gateron Ink Black V2s are the smoothest and the Cherry MX Blacks are the scratchiest. But after everything was said and done, that's not what happened. 
Most people could at least agree that the Cherry MX Black switches are the scratchiest. But most folks had a different opinion on the smoothest switch. And it wasn't the Gateron Ink Black V2. It was the Gateron Oil King. According to our scratchy factor, the Oil King should have appeared towards the scratchier side. And yet, most folks ranked it as the smoothest switch out of the bunch. And if they didn't put it in their top choice, it was in their top three. So why was that? One of the key observations made both in the development of this test and in this little side experiment was that most people listened for scratchiness. Some people did this after pressing the switch, while others listened immediately. We'll bring a mic into this to understand what they heard. The Gateron Oil King sounds smooth, especially when compared to the Cherry MX Black. And the Atho Jelly Black. The Oil Kings might not be totally silent, but they're quieter than the Cherry MX Silent Black switches. Audible noise plays a huge part in how people experience scratchiness. Removing that factor from our test wouldn't capture the full experience. So, we developed an audio component as part of this test. In a nutshell, we record the switch as it's pressed midway using a camera with a mic mounted on top. This video ends up in the review so you can see and hear the switch for yourself as it's in action. On the back end, we run a plot spectrum job on the audio data to find the high frequency and loud noises that indicate scratchiness. Combining these results with our scratchy factor, we end up with a factory smoothness score, a more holistic picture including the feel of the press and the sound. If we resort our results by the factory smoothness, the holistic picture as opposed to just the scratchy factor, the subjective test results better align with what we found empirically. The Gateron Ink Black V2 is still the highest ranking, which some folks had a strong opinion about, and that's fine. We really wouldn't expect a massive difference in the feeling across the top or the bottom. And for the most part, that's true. What this little experiment shows us is a few things. The first is that there was a need for objective testing to help sort these switches. Even trying to sort seven switches in a particular order wasn't just time consuming, but showed a lot of variances between people. To do a test like this subjectively would only be showing one person's personal preferences. And while there's some good taste here, Taste making isn't data. Another result from this is that our factory smoothness score works. And for you at home, it can help you decide how much work and effort to put into your keyboard build. In general, unlubed switches fare worse on our test at large. The lowest scoring switches are all standard unlubed offerings like Cherry MX Blue, Cherry MX Brown, and Cherry MX Black. As a note, these are the older versions, the MX1A, that don't have the improvements Cherry announced in August of 2023. So we'd expect the more recent versions of these switches to perform a bit better. Having said that, for the switches scoring at the lower end of the smoothness test, a lubing station might be a worthwhile investment. Switches on the higher end tend to feel good and sound good out of the box with minimal modifications. So. Is Cedric the new Galileo? Were we able to accurately capture a subjective experience as a numeric value? Well, sorry Cedric, but the factory smoothness score is certainly no thermoscope. It was a valiant effort, but even if we could assign a numeric score to the feeling of scratchiness, no amount of engineering can replace personal preferences. Many people buy switches not just for their smoothness, but for their aesthetic qualities like thawkiness, creaminess, or poppiness. This test doesn't yield data about those aspects, and really, that wasn't the point. We created the factory smoothness test to give you a sense of how a switch feels right out of the box. It's more of an oil and water style test. It can easily separate smooth from scratchy. The results from our little subjective experiment corroborate. Most people can also tell apart smooth from scratchy, but everything following in between isn't as clearly distinguishable. Well, that concludes our deep dive into the research and development of our keyboard switch tests. You can read further into our process in an article on our website. And while you're there, why not head to our forums? Our forums are the perfect place to discuss our methodology and let us know what you really think. We're always monitoring them and are quick to respond, so don't hesitate to head over there using the link in the description below. 
Until next time, I'm Abby from Ratings.com, where we help you find the best product for your needs. Objective numeric data.